So despite the recent news, I have finally got in on the crypto action. I understand that this is a crazy volatile market where even a tweet from an influential person can cause the market to crash. Nevertheless, I have still chosen this moment to begin my cryptocurrency journey and I wanted to share with you why that is and also show you how I did it as well, which also happens to be the cheapest way to invest in crypto. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So when it comes to crypto, although it has been on my radar for some time, up until this point, it has never really aligned with my personal risk appetite when it came to investing. I was more focused with long-term growth. And of course, as you probably are aware, investing in crypto is highly, highly volatile and very, very uncertain. Over the last few years, my main focus when it came to my personal finance goals was really to lay down a good solid foundation for my long-term growth. I also wanted to sort out my pension and buy my very first property. Now that all of that has now been achieved, I've recently purchased my very first home and I am still investing within my stocks and shares and pension. However, I do believe my foundation is now pretty solid. So now I thought it was a good time for me to dabble some of my money into high risk investments. Enter crypto. Now I'm not investing much. I actually bought 150 pounds worth of cryptocurrency just yesterday and I plan to top this up around about 50 pounds per month going forward. So it is really, really small and it will make up less than 1% of my investment portfolio. This of course is the case for today. As things progress and I get more and more into it, I may decide to increase my contributions or change up my tactics um, in the next few months. But this is what I'm gonna go for as my starting base. Now, I just want to add that I know high risk investments is discouraged by many, and even I personally don't talk about it much on this YouTube channel. However, once you have reached a comfortable stage within your personal finance journey, I do think it is okay to dip your toes within high risk waters. It almost feels like a natural progression almost, similar as it did with me. Now, there are many high risk investments that you can get involved with. It doesn't necessarily have to be crypto, but as long as you are responsible, you have done your research, and you understand the risk, it is actually quite exciting to look into this space. Now, the research part is really, really important. Now, this video doesn't go into what crypto is and how it works, what is blockchain, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll do a video on this a little bit later on down the line, but I would encourage you for those that are thinking about investing in crypto to do as much research as possible before you invest in it. Don't go into this blindly and you have no excuse to do so either. There is so much material available online for you to do your research. Heck, there is so many YouTube channels even that are dedicated to cryptocurrencies as well. So personally for me, my favorite resource was actually a podcast, although she does upload these podcasts onto a YouTube channel. And this was a really great resource for learning the fundamentals of cryptocurrency. Her name is Crypto Cassie, and I'll put a link in the description box down below to her YouTube channel and to her Spotify so you can listen to the podcast for free. So how did I invest in crypto? Now here in the UK, the three most popular ways to invest in cryptocurrency is through one, Coinbase, two, Binance, and three, eToro. Now, after investigating all three platforms, I ended up choosing Binance as the platform to go for. And this was mainly down to two reasons. The first one being is that they are the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the market. They have more than 500 cryptocurrencies and virtual tokens available. When you compare this to another exchange like Coinbase, they only have about 50. And the second reason I chose Binance is they are by far the cheapest when it comes to buying crypto. Coinbase, for example, depending on how much you're trading in crypto, you'll be looking at fees between 1.49% to 3.99%, which is crazy, crazy amounts. Uh, eToro is a bit more complex. They have different fees depending on the type of crypto you're trading with. And as you can see from the table here, this varies from 0.75% for Bitcoin all the way up to 4.5%. 0.5% for IOTA. Binance, on the other hand, again, the fees do depend on how much you are trading and the frequency of your trades, um, but you're looking at fees between 0.1% and 0.02%. So compared to the other two, considerably, considerably less. 
This doesn't mean that Binance doesn't come without its downsides, particularly if you are new to trading. At first glance, if you go on their website or their mobile app, their website is very, very intimidating and can seem very, very complex. I did go onto Coinbase to explore their website and it is by far a lot easier to understand how to buy and sell crypto compared to Binance. But hey, this is what the video is for. I'm gonna quickly demo you how you can invest quite easily within Binance. It's not actually that difficult as it may seem. Another thing that you should be aware of is that Binance did experience a quite severe security breach about two years ago. So if you are thinking about signing up, I would encourage you to enable a two-factor authentication. and That way your account is a lot more secure. Cool, so let's get straight into the demo. So now we have navigated to the Binance main page. I'll put a link in the description box down below so you can access this straight away, uh, just in case you are unsure, because there has been reports of some scammy websites replicating the Binance feel, but in actual fact, they are stealing your data. So I'll put a link in the description box down below. I also have a referral code, which are more than welcome to use. If you do use that referral code, I do actually get a small commission. So I'll put a link in the description box down below for that as well. So on the main page to register with Binance you just go over here and click on the register button and for me this was actually a very straightforward process I asked all the questions that you would typically expect from an investment platform so the initial registration only takes a handful of minutes but if you want to access more features within the website you can move up to the intermediate level and the advanced levels now to progress onto those you do have to provide extra verification one example was I had to provide my driver's license and that actually was really straightforward as well so once you have registered, this is what the main page will sort of look like. And if we navigate over here onto uh, wallet and go to fiat and spot, you can see the cryptocurrencies you actually have, if any. So here it actually lists a whole bunch of cryptocurrencies, but the only ones with numbers is the ones that you actually have available. So you can see I've got some in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So there are actually many different ways that we can actually buy cryptocurrency on Binance, but I'm going to be walking you through the cheapest way of doing this. So let's go over and navigate onto overview just to view what these options are. And we click the deposit button. You can see we have four options. We've got deposit cash, deposit crypto, buy crypto with your credit card, buy crypto from peer to peer marketplace. So the cheapest way to do it is actually to go through deposit cash. And this is what I did yesterday. Eagle Eye watchers would probably have noticed that the title of this page has now changed to deposit fiat. For those that don't know, fiat is just another word for cash. So don't worry, we are still on the right page. So yeah, the first drop down is to select your currency. So you've got all kinds of currencies here. I'll be sticking it with uh, pound sterling. And yeah, we've got two options that are recommended to us. You've got bank card via Visa or MasterCard, which comes with a 1.8% fee. So if we can click continue, Continue into that you can see we just add in the amount uh, we can also add in a bank card and there will be a transaction fee so for example if we did 150 pounds which is what I did yesterday you can see the transaction fee is two pounds 70 which is actually quite a lot 1.8 percent is a very hefty fee the other option however is a zero percent fee which is called faster payments and this is what I did yesterday so uh, we'll just click continue there again we just add in the amount that we want to do um, I'm actually going to do this now, so I'm going to put in £10, but as you can see, if I did 10 or even £1,000, the transaction fee is still zero. I'm just going to be putting £10 just for the purpose of this demo. We hit confirm. So now it gives me more information. I'll just close this pop-up box for now, but this gives you all the information you need to ensure that your money is transferred to Binance. Now, this did actually make me a little bit nervous because as you can tell, the onus is now on you to ensure that the money is transferred correctly to Binance. If you get any of these digits wrong, uh, who knows where your money is going? So do be extra careful. Now, here it advises to wait one to two business days. Now, when I did 150 pounds yesterday, it actually took me no more than 10 minutes to get it successfully deposited. Now, I did do some research and it seems that there are cases where the transfer of money can take a little bit longer. I have read some cases taking about three to even four working days, which is not ideal. However, for me, it took 10 minutes and I'm hoping it will take 10 minutes again for this way. A few moments later. Cool, so I have just received a text saying that my money has successfully deposited into Binance. I actually had to do two deposits because I did forget that the minimum amount that you can buy crypto is 15 pounds. So I had to do a second deposit of five pounds. Uh, and if we navigate over to transaction history and then click on to fiat, we can see both those transactions here. 
Cool, so once money is now into your Binance account, we can now start to buy crypto. Now, the easiest way to do this is if we hover our mouse over to buy crypto, and then we click on the cash balance option. Now, when we go onto this page, you do have the option to buy and sell crypto. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just focusing on buying and I'll do a separate video in the future on how to sell. So as you can see on the left hand side, you get some interesting statistics on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the default view, but we can change this later on. When we go over to the buy crypto bit here, we just put in 15 pounds of how much crypto I want to buy. At the bottom, you can see cash balance, and this is how much you do have available as cash in your Binance wallet, and it says here £15. And then the second option is to select which cryptocurrency you would like to buy. I already mentioned it defaults to Bitcoin, but if you click on it, you've got Ethereum, you've got Shiba, uh, you've got Dogecoin, and if you click on those options, the graph on the left-hand side will adjust for that currency. So once you're happy, I'm not going to actually buy uh, Dogecoin here, but I will click onto the next menu. So if we click buy... And then it gives you a summary order and you've got 60 seconds to confirm whether or not you would like to purchase the cryptocurrency. So here it gives me a summary. Um, so I'm paying with my cash balance. The price of one Dogecoin is 25p. Uh, the fee on this will be two pence. And if you hover over, I'm being charged a fee of 0.13%. And then I will get 61.1 Dogecoins. Now, if I want to complete the confirmation, I just have to hit confirm and my payment will be complete. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this purpose, um, but we will see Dogecoin appear if we navigate to our wallet um, over here if I did continue to purchase it. Cool, so that is how you buy cryptocurrency on Binance. As I've demonstrated, it's actually really, really straightforward to do so. Please don't get intimidated by the website and the amount of options that you do have. Follow my beginner steps and you'll be absolutely fine. I will just quickly show you why people do get intimidated. If we go over to trade and click advanced, we're taken to a page where it gives you a whole host of numbers and a really, really funky graph. This is to spot trade cryptocurrencies. It's a bit more complex and a bit more advanced. Um, and usually people see this when it comes to demos on Binance. And I think this typically scares them away. But there is another easier way to buy crypto on Binance. And I've just demonstrated that for you. Cool. So that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on cryptocurrencies. And if you've invested in them, did you do it through Coinbase, eToro, Binance, or another platform? that maybe I haven't mentioned yet. So yeah, I love hearing from you all, so please do let me know. And as always, if you did find today's episode really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And remember, I release a video every single week, so if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye. Bye.